Well, it doesn't look like much right now. But it's still a mess of wires. It's like before. Going overhead, running all through our basement. Just keeping everything nice and tidy. Oh, hello! Did you miss me? Don't lie. You didn't. You know you didn't. So, uh, <laughs> been working on a home network, kind of a home project as I've been off work today. Yeah. Did a bit of this yesterday, too. Basically, had our home network in my uh, roommate's office. For anybody who's watched any previous episodes, has had it all hanging up on the wall there. That's what a modem was, the router, all the uh, PoE injectors, everything. Got it down to a handful of cords, I'll sort it out later, but that is, for the most part, aside from like an IP camera going outside, rerouted down the way, all the way to this corner over here. And the reason for that is simple. Well, two reasons. One, roommate wanted to clean up his office. A lot of overhead wires. Wanted to have something simple, clean. Two, we're eventually putting a server rack right here. Might be about 20, 22U. Gotta make it look really professional. And the greatest part about already making this move is we always had power issues with this house. Just however it's distributed, like my roommate's office there. Shares power with the kitchen. I don't know how how the old, old electricians did this house up, but the great thing is, this outlet right here, this lone little outlet in the basement, has its own circuit, its own 20 amp circuit. Most of the circuits in this house are 15 amps, but there's a lone 15 amp circuit with newer wiring. All I can speculate is maybe the old owner uh, had a chest freezer right there. But hey, it's gonna work out for us because we can have a few uh, file server, PoE switch, maybe a fan here just for air circulation. Eventually, maybe a small AC if it gets too crazy. But uh, yeah, little mini home server rack is gonna be on the way. What is on the way right now is a uh, battery backup, uh, UPS rack mount unit. Really awesome. Even putting in a module that will, will let me remotely reboot any of these devices uh, physically, like hardwire power. And yeah, it's expensive but exciting and will hopefully work beautifully. This switch will be replaced by a switch soon, so these million little injectors here will be gone. It's going to be exciting. Uh, of course, this, the Switch and UPS are coming first, but really looking forward to getting this all done. But yeah, that was the big push was getting all this wiring redirected. That was probably a good three, four hundred feet of wire just looping through stuff. <laughs> Eight and a half hour project. It was more time than I actually spent at work yesterday. The things I do for networking because I'm a nerd. And don't forget. When working with overhead wires, safety first. Had a lot of crap kind of fall on my face. Luckily, none of it got in my eye. That'd be rather irritating. This just in. Dollar Tree sells Blu-rays for only a dollar. Who knew? I mean, you probably won't have heard of any of these movies, but they have them. I I'm not paid for them. They can't afford me. I'm not paid by them. They cannot afford me. Trust me. So anybody who's talked to me recently knows I was really wanting to build a AMD Zen system when they come out since 8 thread, eight cores, 16 threads. A lot of power. Probably going to be pretty cheap. I found myself a better deal. This is a HP Z800 workstation. Managed to get it for $200. And what does that have in it? Well, it's kind of a doozy. I first open this sucker up. Really nice, thick aluminum side casing. Just impressively rugged. Taking this, opening this thing up, up is a bit of a chore because you gotta get, kind of gotta do it by department at a time. But what it has in it, dual six-core Xeon X5670s. That's 
two six core Xeons that'll do 12 threads a piece. So this is 24 threads of processing power on the cheap. Uh, the RAM, it's here under the fans. Uh, I pull these out, but it's really hard to get that get it get that out without uh, two free hands. So, but anyway, underneath these fans, 12 RAM slots, triple channel RAM, 12 RAM slots, up to I think 96 gigabytes per CPU. But it currently has 12 gigs in there, and I'm going to upgrade it to 96 gigs that I managed to get for a really good price. So I'm just gonna have RAM for days that I might fill up with games for RAM disk, like load up Star Citizen or GTA 5 into the RAM so my load times will be virtually non-existent. Or just throw a lot of virtual machines at it, just eating up a lot of, eating up a lot of RAM just to have RAM to burn because it's actually pretty cheap and these things are really good for that. Graphics card is just a cheap extra one I put in there. These things do come with uh, two six-pin plugs. Now, eight-pin plugs were pretty much non-existent at the time. Most graphics cards just used one or two six-pins back in 2010, 2011 when this came out. When you're not using them, they actually rest here kind of nicely. But I did manage to find uh, an adapter. It'll do two six-pin to an eight-pin, so I'll be able to run at least... Uh, a GTX 1070 in there if I if I wanted to but yeah completely mechanically uh, reten complete mechanical retention on the GPU basically when you put this cover on it forces uh, this cover on it forces uh, that lever shut holds the graphics card in place also has retention tabs holds the graphics card really steady ton of PCI Express lanes you get two by 16 lanes one for each CPU and every single slot, every single PCI Express th slot is, uh, I can't remember the term for this, but it act it's actually uncapped. So you could technically run in multiple slots here, several graphics cards, just for a ton of raw compute power. If you don't need a lot of bandwidth, just a ton of raw compute power for like Bitcoin mining or folding at home, you can do that beautifully with a machine like this. So my plans are, uh, after I get the RAM, up RAM upgraded, I'll throw an M.2 drive in there, some uh, Seagate Constellation SAS drives, throw them in a RAID. Just make this my main desktop, because this is a lot of power for a really good price. Now, I'm sure some of you have worked with servers and know what their power supplies are like. They're nice and modular. This is kind of the same way. Basically, pull out this lever, and it unlatches, and you pull out this giant unit that takes up the whole length of the unit. As a, I wish I can get this on camera in a way that it does it justice, but two inlet fans, has these nice kind of modular blocks that attach in there, and an outlet at the back. So this thing actually pulls in air through this front kind of handle scoop and exits it out the back. One of the HP reps said uh, that you can use that to warm your hands up if you need to. Yeah, instead of building an AMD Zen machine, Zen machine, I think I'm just going to upgrade this as much as I can. I forgot to add that computers like these, you can easily find these on eBay for $250, $300, depending on the specs. I was able to find a really, really good deal. Most people probably won't get that lucky, but either way, if you, if you can even find these things for $1,000, it's a still a good value for how much processing power you get, so for how cheap it is. And power draw is a little higher compared to a modern system, yes, but it's not going to add up to more than a few bucks a year on your power bill, no matter what your rates are. So for the power cost, it's very worth it. Any questions or comments, just let me know. Anything you liked here, please like and subscribe. Uh, hopefully start making this a regular series again, or trying to make a regular series again. See you next time.